Everyone has a story to tell. Welcome to Dingo Talk, where we explore the experiences that make us who we are. Here's your host, Carlo Guadagnino. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is Dingo Talk. Uh, Football season is in full swing. The NFL started last week. College football is two weeks in, going into week three here. Uh, And this week, we're going to Kenyon College to talk to Coach Ian Good. Uh, Obviously, these interviews were shot prior to the season because, you know, coaches have a job to do and interviewing with me is not part of that job, Um, during the season at least. So there's going to be some information here of where Coach thought – the team was going into the 2023 season. Uh, Just to give you guys a little bit of an update of where they are, uh, Kenyon comes in 0-2, dropping a 48-16 game to Kalamazoo last week. Uh, They'll be playing at Wittenberg at 6 p.m. Big shakeups going on all around Division III college football. Uh, The biggest one for us that we've had, uh, Wisconsin-Whitewater jumping from 8-4 to after – a convincing win over number four St. John's. Um, for those of you that have been sticking around for overtime and the pick'em, let's just say it was a rough week for the uh, the host of this show picking the games. It was not so much a tough week for the person that wasn't picking or that that isn't the one that normally knows what she's doing when picking the games. Um, also, there are two games there that we're just going to give points for everybody because they didn't play this week. So there's all that. Plus, make sure you're following us on Twitter, X, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The only one that's different is the Instagram page. Um, And then if you're watching us on YouTube, we really appreciate it. If you're following along with the Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, anywhere else you get your podcasts, we really appreciate you. Make sure you hit the the little bell. And as I said... um, you know, make sure you stick around for after because I think the pick'em is going to get real interesting when we figure out where all the stats were. I can tell you again, I did not have a good week this week. Uh, I only got six right, so there's that. But without further ado, this is Coach Ian Good. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is Dingo Talk. My guest this week is the head football coach at Kenyon College, uh, Coach Ian Good. Coach, thank you for sitting down with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm going to do this the same way I do every week. I'm going to take you back in time and we're going to work our way to the day. So how does, how do you find yourself at Kalamazoo? Yeah. Um, so, you know, playing high school football, um, I grew up on the the East East ish side of Michigan, right near Ann Arbor um, in Saline, Michigan. So, so played high school football there, um, you know, kind of towards the end of my junior year was, was really deciding, okay, I want to, I want to do this in college. Um, mm-hmm. And so I started kind of working with my, my coaches and and trying to figure out where I would fit. I didn't, you know, I, I realized I probably wasn't a division one football player, um, but didn't quite know really the landscape of recruiting at all. So, um, you know, I knew of some division two schools like Grand Valley. Um, I had known about, um, you know, Hope College and and some of those other, um, you know, Division three schools. Adrian was kind of close to us, so I kind of knew about them. Um, <clears throat> but it was really just kind of finding one, some schools that I liked um, and thought that I might be interested, but then kind of figuring out the football piece of it as well. So um, kind of in between my junior year and senior year, went on some some really just college visits before it was even uh, really involved in football the, the summer before my senior year. Um, did a couple camps, camps weren't huge back then, but but did a couple, went to a Michigan camp, went to a Hope College camp. So kind of saw the difference between like a division one and a, a division three campus. Um, yeah. Kind of decided there, even though I still applied to some, some bigger schools that I, I, I thought a, a small school would be what I was looking for. Um, so, you know, visited a lot of schools, visit to Kalamazoo had nothing to do with football. Um, I had heard about the school from some family and um, I went during the summer and and actually I, I sat down with somebody from admissions. I think it was the Dean of Admissions. And, and I think I gave them my highlight tape to pass along to uh, the football staff, um, because I didn't, I, I didn't know them yet. 
Um, and then the, the conversations kind of got going from there. And, um, you know, I, I knew I wanted a high academic school is really the best, you know, school that I could get into, um, wanting to say somewhat close to home and, and, um, you know, Kalamazoo, I got admitted to, to Kalamazoo and, um, you know, I, I went on an overnight visit there and I went on a game day first. Um, and then I went back for an overnight and, and that really sold me after the overnight, I was like, yep, this is where I'm going as long as I get in. Um, and I got the acceptance and it was very, very shortly after that, I called up, um, my recruiting coach there, coach Krajasic, he's still there, um, and committed to him. And, and I think I was maybe the first one in that class actually in like <laughs> December, um, and Ned, he always tells me that, um, I, or maybe it was in January cause they were at the coaches convention. Um, but yeah, that, that's how I ended up at, at Kalamazoo. It was partly me looking at schools, but then, you know, once the football piece kind of became a part of it, absolutely fell in love with the school, fell in love with the staff and, and really the culture that was, um, being built by head coach, coach Zorbo again, who's also still there. Now, when you, so you graduate with a psychology and business, is it? So, so you dual major Correct. there. Was that always, cause you, you seem to be very academic focused. Was that kind of always psychology and business? Was that what you were always going to go for? So I knew psychology. I took an AP psychology class in high school and that really led me to be like, okay, yeah, I want to try psychology in, in college, but I also was really interested in sociology. Mm -hmm. um, I had, had taken a, an elective class with, with one of the, the, the teachers in, in high school and, um, and he really drove me to being interested in sociology. But once I got to Kalamazoo, I took a couple, I took an intro psych and I took an intro sociology, loved psych, not a fan of sociology, <laughs> um, at least at, in college. So um, I stuck with psych. Um, mm -hmm. And then kind of along the way, I was taking some business classes, some intro level classes. Um, I actually finished my psychology major by the end of my junior year. Um, and then I had, I needed like two or three more classes to get a major in business. So I just used my senior year as the time to do that. Yeah. Um, fulfill requirements for both of them and yeah got ended up with with a dual major now how has your psychology degree helped you with coaching yeah um I think there's two pieces to it I think th there's the obvious like understanding people and understanding how different people work and and all of that so I think that was that has definitely helped me um and mm -hmm. just understanding people and knowing that you can't treat everybody the same and um, because their brains don't work the same. Um, but then the other piece was those were some of the hardest classes that I ever had to take, even though they were the most enjoyable. So it, it really taught me how to work through some of those hard times and, and those hard situations, especially because it was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you leave Kalamazoo, is the coaching bug already with you? I mean, is it, is it kind of that you knew that's where you wanted to go or, or how did that play out? Yeah. So as I, again, as I was getting kind of towards the end of my uh, career there, getting, you know, finishing my senior season, um, you know, getting into the winter and the spring trimesters, um, I started applying to some grad schools and um, I got into a couple, I got denied by a couple, and this was mostly for psychology because I wanted to, to test out that realm. Mm -hmm. um, then I went to my head coach and we kind of had a conversation um, and it was probably more of like, Hey, I'm not ready to be done with football. Um, and he was, there was a graduate assistant who was just leaving there. Um, so there was a position open at Kalamazoo, um, and they were, you know, going to pay me enough to where I could get a master's degree and, uh, coach there. And it was at Western Michigan. So they're literally right across the street from each other. Okay. Um, so it was a perfect combination of, I could try coaching, see if I liked it and I could get a master's degree. Um, and it, yeah, it was just a really good combination of doing both. Now I, I heard, I heard you as you were, you were talking there, the, this, this trimester thing now, now yeah. I don't, I, I'm not, I had a, a, another coach on earlier in the program that they talked about trimesters as well. What is that? How does that all work for, for a school year? Yeah. Uh, so it was definitely, uh, interesting. So, we started way later than a typical semester. Um, okay. So we almost had three or four home game or three or four games into the season before we would actually start school. Okay. Um, so it was way later, uh, but that meant more football before school. Um, so they were 10 week trimesters. So it was mm -hmm. a very shortened um, period of time. And we only took three classes per trimester. So it was three classes in 10 weeks. Then you have your week of exams. 
And then that usually got us to Thanksgiving. And then once we hit Thanksgiving, we were off from Thanksgiving until the new year. So it was like a six week break. Okay. Um, and when we came back, we did another 10 weeks uh, with our uh, one week of uh, actually, no, yeah, one or two weeks of spring break. Then we came back, did another 10 weeks. But so we started later, but we ended later. So we went all the way until June usually. Um, wow. Yeah. So that, that's kind of how it worked. And I actually, other than the the timing in at the end of the year, which was kind of tough because all your friends are are done and they're back home. Um, I loved the shortened uh, part of it and only having to take three classes. You could really focus in on those three classes. Um, yeah. They were intense, definitely, but it was it was I liked it a lot better. It's just an interesting, you know, I, I never thought how they would break that that up. Um, mm -hmm. So as a GA, you're, you're, you're a GA at your alma mater. Now, were there were there any complications or or kind of hurdles that you had to get over as, you know, this year prior, I was I was the guy running the wind sprints with you with the shoulder pads on and and and, and we were going. And now I'm the guy with the whistle and the clipboard telling you, hey, we're going to get to yeah. this drill and that drill. Yeah, um, there's obviously that kind of like, hey, I was just hanging out with you guys last semester. And now we you know, there's got to be that boundary. But um, I was a two time captain. And I think at least from that aspect, there was that leadership um, there was that respect at least already, like, Hey, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, you know, there, and, and the, the group of guys that I had to coach my first two years were awesome. Um, and they, they didn't necessarily make it very hard on me. And, and, um, you know, it was a great transition into coaching at least for them. And then obviously it was, okay, how do I turn now from a player just getting coached by all of these coaches to now I'm in their world and you know now I'm building relationships with them, but they again the the coaches there made it made it extremely I won't say easy necessarily, but it, they made it a smooth transition um, into the coaching world and and taught me a lot and and really um, that that was where my love of coaching really developed. Any advice for the coaches to be that are going to be coming up here in the next uh, six odd months? Yeah, um, listen a lot try and, and uh, absorb as much information as possible and do as much as you possibly can to help out the other coaches um, because they're going to see it and they're going to appreciate it. And, um, you know, they gave, they may give you more important work after that um, than you can, you know, even if you are a GA, right. And, and especially on a small staff, um, usually the GAs and the interns aren't just guys inputting data. They're guys that are coaching, they're guys that are recruiting, Right. So, so take pride in what you're doing and, and work as much as you possibly can. Coach, why in after the 16 or is it the 16 season? I have it written here. 16. 16. Yeah. After the 16 season, why the choice to move on to Wayne State? Yeah. So <clears throat> that was kind of the thing. Like I had been a GA now for two years. I had finished my, I actually finished my master's degree kind of early so I could start looking at jobs in the spring of, uh, I think it was 15. Yeah. Going into 15 or 16. I can't remember. Um, but either way. Yeah. So, um, I, I knew that I wanted to keep coaching. Um, mm -hmm. but I also kind of wanted to branch out. Um, you know, I'd been in the same place for six years in a row and there really wasn't any opportunity for a full-time job there. Um, so I knew that I had to try something new, even if it meant going to another division or going to another school to take a similar type of role. Um, that was what I felt I needed to do to advance my career. Now, what was the experience like at Wayne state? Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was, um, almost exactly what you would expect a GA life to be like, you know, there were late nights at the office, early mornings at the office, um, that honestly, that year of football that I was there was the most football I learned in my entire coaching career. I had an amazing head coach, Paul Winters, that I was working for, um, an awesome defensive coordinator, Brad Wilson, an awesome linebackers coach, John Robinson, and, and everybody in between. Um, and it was super intense. Like it was mm -hmm. way more intense than division three. Um, and, but it, it paid off. Um, and I saw kind of what, um, 
I don't want to say grinding because sometimes grinding gets a, a bad, you know, connotation, but like really putting in the work and, and getting into the details and finding out as much as you possibly could um, about your opponent. Um, and, and, it, and it worked for us. Now we had some extremely talented players at, at Wayne state. And that, that honestly was my favorite as a defensive coach because our offense held the ball for probably 60 to 70% of the game. Um, and it made it extremely easy uh, for our defense to uh, to perform. And we had a really good defense that year mm -hmm. as well. So it was it was an awesome experience um, and one that I would not trade out for the world. Now, after that year, what drew you to the beginning of your journey at Kenyon? Yes. Um, so after three years of being a GA, I was like, all right, I need to make some money, right? Like <laughs> I, I, I love this coaching thing. Um, and, and I loved Wayne State and where I was at, but I, I, I wanted to further my career. I wanted to be a full-time coach and, and get that experience of, of coaching a position on my own. Um, and it was, it was really funny. So it, it was, again, it was kind of the, the winter springtime. Um, and I was, I was actually working kind of like a second job at, at Wayne state just to get a little bit of extra cash. And, mm -hmm. um, while I was doing that, um, you know, saw a job posting for this linebackers job at Kenyon. Um, and I had met a former Kenyon coach or he was a coach at the time. Um, he's not here anymore, but I had met him through the camp circuit, um, as we were recruiting and kind of stayed in touch. We were both, uh, Michigan guys and, um, grew up relatively close to each other and we just kind of stayed in contact. So I reached out to him and it was like, Hey, is this, is this posting legit? Like, are you guys actually looking for somebody or do you already have a guy in mind? And he's like, yeah, no, we're, we're looking for somebody. Um, so he gave my stuff to the head coach. The head coach called me, I don't know, maybe a week later. Uh, we just talked for 20, 30 minutes and then uh, they brought me on campus, had an on-campus interview and, and got hired that spring. So I came on after spring ball that year mm -hmm. Um but it was kind of right into it. I, I got there in May and I was on the road recruiting like a week later. Um, and that was completely new as well because uh, recruiting at Kalamazoo was very much uh, recruit Michigan and maybe a little bit of Chicago. Wayne okay. State uh, was also similar, but I had less of a hand in recruiting. Um, and then getting to Kenyon, it was like, okay, now we're going to fly out to the East Coast um, and you're also going to do Ohio, right? So it was just a completely different landscape and a different way of doing things that I just kind of had to jump right into. Now, is recruiting in Ohio more difficult than in certain other states when you're talking about the amount of D3 schools, the amount of D2 schools, and then, you know, there's a couple of those larger schools uh, uh, all scattered throughout the state as well? Yeah, it, it is definitely hard, but we, since taking over, I've really tried to make an emphasis of um, doing as much as we possibly can in Ohio. And we hit the big cities, we hit Cleveland, we hit Columbus, we hit Cincinnati. Um, and especially this this first cycle, we were pretty successful um, in all accounts. We were bringing in 27 guys total, and of those guys, six are from Ohio. Um, so it's not a huge percentage, but over, you know, over time, if we're getting six to, to eight every single year out of Ohio, that's going to create a big difference for us. And, and it's, and it's also the schools that we're getting them from are, uh, St. Ed's and, uh, LaSalle and St. Yeah. X and, uh, Moeller, right. So they're the programs that are consistently churning out really good product. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I was proud of that for our staff. Now, Coach, so you get to Kenyon in the spring of 17. Yes. Fast forward, you go through three years into your time at Kenyon. You go through what most of us went through, which was that that year that I don't think anybody even knows. Did it end? Did it, did it start? Where are we at? So after that, what was the what was the benefit or the struggle, I guess, from that 2020 where it was kind of in limbo to then getting back on the field in 21. And, and, and how did you guys adapt with that? Yeah. Um, I think the best part about that was the excitement of our guys just getting back to somewhat normalcy. It definitely still wasn't like normal, mm -hmm. but our guys coming back and playing football and practicing and playing games, like it was, that that initial excitement was was awesome because it kind of got us off and off and running. Um, some things that that uh, we had to learn how to do things differently, um, from practicing to recruiting mm -hmm. um, to meetings, um, just overall contact with our guys and recruits 
as as with everybody turned virtual right yeah. i mean we had to learn how to zoom we had to learn how to do virtual visits um you know trying to keep tabs on our guys as much as possible even though we couldn't see them um so and and you know it was good and bad but now and now it's kind of turning back to okay we got to talk to people in person we got to we got to learn yeah. how to uh, relearn how to uh you know build those relationships face to face instead of through a phone um or or through a screen so it was you know it, it was good and bad um but it was definitely nice to get back to real football now fast forward another year out of the that last year where you were the the defensive coordinator now you get the the head job why mm -hmm. was this the right fit for you to stay and and, and yeah. become the head guy yeah um i always thought i wanted to be a head coach um that was definitely something that that i i thought was in the cards at some point in my career did i think i was going to get that opportunity this early in my career absolutely not um, I think it was a, a combination of of right place, right time, and being around the right coaches to have prepared me early enough um, to go get the job. Um, and and definitely, um, you know, have to give it to my my first head coach, Coach Zorbo. Um, you know, coaching and 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 mentoring me through my first couple of years, and then Coach Winters uh, again, a completely different style of coach and. Um, all of the then wealth of knowledge that he had. And then uh, the two previous coaches at, at Kenyon, again, learned a lot about what it was like, not just to be a head coach or, or as a coach in general, but how to do it at Kenyon and see what worked, see what didn't work, see what I thought I wanted to do um, and kind of mesh it into kind of what our culture is, is turning into today and, and how we run things. So. All right, coach, this is a two parter. So first off, yeah. what is your coaching philosophy and the second part of that is what is the culture of the team? What are you trying to build with, yeah. with Kenyon? Yeah. So my coaching philosophy is, is all about relationships and it's all about people. Um, that's what I tell recruits. That's what I tell our guys is that us as coaches and my job is to build deep, meaningful relationships to you to the point that you trust me and to the point where I can push you to achieve your goals and and hopefully push you past those goals right so that's my philosophy um and i'll take you to our mission first as a program because i think that is kind of the root of who we are um, and why we do what we do every single day so our mission as a program is to enhance the lives of our student athletes academically athletically and socially uh, within the community all while preparing them for life after college right so there's there's two pieces to that there is their experience while they're here at Kenyon and getting the absolute most that they can out of it um, in all three phases of their, their life and then giving them the tools and giving them connections uh, for life once they graduate. Um, so that's kind of our mission. And then I told you about our philosophy of how we do that by building relationships. And then um, on a daily basis, we try and live by three core values. It's toughness, grit, and family. Um, we're going to put our guys through uh, really tough situations, both mentally and physically. Um, mm -hmm. Going to Kenyon is a challenge in and of itself. Um, so I don't have to do too much on the academic side of things to give them that challenge. Um, but we definitely take care of that when it comes to the weight room, when it comes to the meeting room and on the practice field. Um, and then through those tough situations, we're going to teach them how to persevere through those obstacles and how to get, get over those humps um, mm -hmm. to build that grit, right? And we're, we, we very much... Um, operate in that we're not going to move the obstacles out of the way for you. We're going to teach you and we're going to show you how to get through it. Yeah. Um, and then the last piece of, of being a family is we're going to do as much of this together as a family as we possibly can to build that trust, to build that belief in one another. That way, when we're down by, you know, seven in the fourth quarter that, that we know that we've got each other's backs and, and we're going to do this win or lose, right? We're, we're going to be with each other. And um, you know, that's obviously easy to talk about, but I think um, we've, we as a staff have done a really great job in the first off season, in this last off season of trying to do as many things off the field with our guys as, as we can, right? So community service, um, obviously those guys are in the weight room together all the time. Um, 
yeah, that, so that that's kind of our culture. And the last piece of it is is what we call is our winner's mindset. So um, we're trying to build winners here at Kenyon. And, mm-hmm. and it's not just winning on a Saturday and it's not just performing well on that exam that you have or, or doing a really good paper. It's all of the, pro- the little steps um, and the process that it takes to get to it that we try and educate our guys on um, to build them into winners because that's what it's going to take in the real world. Um, yeah. So that's what it's going to take here at Kenyon. Now, coach, what can you put us in the room with you and a recruit? What are what are some <laughs> of the things? What are the some of the things that are going to benefit a student athlete uh, going to Kenyon, uh, and more on the academic side and and just about yeah. the school? Yeah, I think when when you talk about the academics, obviously it's an extremely prestigious school, and that kind of sells itself. Um, but I think a couple key parts about Kenyon and why it's so great. One is the community that we're a part of, and and um, you know, the, the professors and the faculty here, uh, we have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, and that just allows our students, um, students and student athletes to get a, an, an extremely intimate education. They, they get to really know their professors One, they can't hide, right. They're in those small classes. Um, and, and it gives them that opportunity to, to really, um, you know, bond with their professors and bond with their classmates and, and get a lot out of it rather than sitting in a, a room with a hundred people. Um, so I think that's a huge benefit. Um, and then when you, when you talk about um, your academic connection with football, um, you know, our alumni network is amazing, um, not only at the school, but within the football program. Back in 2013, we started this program called the Kenyan Alumni Mentorship Program. Um, and this is something where we directly connect our, our current players with alumni in the field that they're trying to get into. Um, So this is something, but before they graduate, they know somebody in the field. And as long as they leverage it the right way, um, you know, it's going to help their career. It doesn't mean they're going to get a job necessarily from their mentor, uh, but they they can utilize that. Um, And then on top of that, we we do some programming um, on campus two, three times a year to bring back alumni. We involve our career development office. Um, So again, it's all about that, that end goal of helping them kind of uh, get that um, get that job or, or internship or, or get into grad school after Kenyon. So coach, let's talk about the 2022 season, just a quick yeah. recap from, and your thoughts now that we're rolling into the 23 season. Um, just give us a quick synopsis on the, the three and seven uh, yeah. finish for the year. Yeah. Uh, improvement and missed opportunities. Um, you know, we, we came a long way as a team, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there was definitely some, some culture stuff that I wanted to change. There was definitely some schematic stuff that I wanted to change, um, coming into the 2022 year and, um, you know, offensively and defensively, I think we did a lot of great things. I, I, I mean, looking at, at our stats and everything offensively, we were great, uh, top 25 in the country in a lot of areas. Um, and defensively we lacked in a, in a little bit. Um, and I can take that personally a little bit cause I'm a defensive guy. So, um, I can put that on me. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of improvement in a lot of areas. Our rushing attack was, was way better. Our passing attack was amazing. Um, we got a lot of good football players on the field and, and got them experience. And um, I thought we had a lot of great leadership as well from our, our seniors. Um, those guys had been through a lot in their four to five years that they were here at Kenyon from COVID to uh, coaching changes to coordinator changes, all of that. And they really embraced what we were trying to do. Um, and they moved forward and, and, you know, put as together as best of a season as, as they, they, they could, um, you know, when I say missed opportunities, uh, we were four points away from being a five and five team. And obviously that looks extremely different, um, on a, uh, on a schedule than, than three and seven does after having gone three and seven, the, the two previous years, um, but, you know, they were all things that are, are, you can learn from, um, they were situational things that I as a head coach can learn from and our coordinators can learn from um, and our players can learn from as well. Um, so yes, they were missed opportunities, but they're, they were great learning opportunities for me and, and for the rest of our team to, to hopefully when we get in those situations again, now we can be calm, we can be cool, we can be collected and, and, you know, maybe it still doesn't go our way, but you know, we can, we can be a little bit better. Now, heading into the 23 season, I, if I saw right on the website, there there were some coordinator changes. There were some some pieces moved around. What should we expect this year from the from, from Kenyon? Yeah, definitely. Um, defensively, um, it's going to be a whole new mentality. Um, Coach McMurray uh, getting promoted 
um, to defensive coordinator. He was our previous defensive line coach and, and he's going to coach with a lot of passion. Um, and, and you're going to see that out of our guys from him. Um, so not only did we bring in him, but we, we hired a new defensive backs coach, um, coach Hyatt from, um, uh, DePaul, um, mm -hmm. he, he played at DePaul. So he understands the conference, um, and kind of who we're playing against. And, and he was a, an amazing, uh, player himself. Um, and then we've got uh, another intern on on that side of the ball, um, Isaiah Fleming, who also played at Kalamazoo. Um, so he he understands me and kind of where I came from. I understand <laughs> where he came from. Uh, also played defensive line, so he's going to be helping us out there. So um, you know, young staff um, on both sides of the ball, but especially on defense. But a lot of passion, a lot of energy there. Um, and then on offense, um, promoting Coach Cottrell, uh recently this summer, um, and then bringing in a couple more coaches around him. Um, you know, he, he's also a young guy, um, you know, a year older than me, I believe. And, um, you know, he, he's a, a different kind of guy than coach McMurray kind of, you know, easy going, cool, collected, um, but always still going to have a, an emphasis on the run game. He's an offensive line guy. Um, so, you know, that, that's what you're going to see out of us is, is, uh, you know, an emphasis there. Um, uh, coach, what's the, what, what do you see for the NCAC this season? Yeah, that that's a, a great question, but a tough question. Um, I I always like to say that any any given week, anybody can beat anyone here in the, in the North Coast Athletic Conference. You've obviously got your guys that are typically at the top, and um, you know DePaul has proved themselves the last couple of years, and and they're doing great, and Wabash and mm -hmm. uh, Wittenberg and Denison and Owu, and and you know those are all all great teams, and um, you know, but we all beat up on each other. I don't think there's, you know, very many weeks that, that people just kind of come in and roll, roll over people. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see the continued, uh, competition. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know who's going to win. I, I, you know, obviously the is good and they can continue being good, but there's, there's guys and, uh, teams that can surprise you in this league. So, um, coach, what's the importance of division three for the athletes out there that don't, yeah. All into that one percenter category. Yeah. I think it's the balance. Um, and I think it's the opportunity to continue playing a sport that you love at an extremely high level. Um, mm -hmm. you know, some people say that division three is glorified high school, and I absolutely disagree with that. Um, division three has extremely good talent. Um, yeah, they might not be as big uh or as fast as division one or division two, but the guys in division three are good football players and mm -hmm. and so I think it's that opportunity to continue playing a high level um, and then still getting that balance of being a student um, and, and getting to, um, you know, do other things on campus. Just like I tell our guys, like, I, I want you to be more than a football player. I want you to be more than um, a student here. Right. Go be a mm -hmm. part of clubs and organizations and go study abroad. If, if that's what is going to get you the most out of your experience here, do it. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I think about Division three. Rapid fire time. So we have, yeah, I added a couple of questions as we were talking just in my head. So the first one, okay. where did you meet your wife? Kenyon. Oh, wow. <laughs> and did <laughs> yeah, I, so did I read that she's a coach as well? Yes. So she uh, came to Kenyon in 2007. So we got here the same year. Um, she got here and, and she took over the women's lacrosse program as a head coach. Um, and we got married in 2019. Um, and she actually just stepped away from coaching after six years, six extremely successful years. Um, and you know, she's going to try a different path. So. All right. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Oh man. <laughs> uh, so one of my favorite places in the country based off of vacationing and kind of, you know, there's a nostalgia growing up. My family would always go to Cape Cod every couple of years. Um, over on the East Coast. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Cape Cod and the East Coast. I'm not a huge city person. So I definitely would probably stray away from like a, a Boston or a New York City, but I definitely like kind of that New England East Coast feel. Um, coach, being given where you're from, uh, this question might be obvious to some, but we have to ask it. it is it Michigan or is it that team down there in Columbus? Uh, Michigan State. Um, I grew oh! up in I grew up in a household. Uh, my mom went to Michigan State um, and my dad went to college down in, in Florida at, at Central Florida. So there was no Michigan talk, even though I grew up 10 minutes from the big house. Um, <laughs> there was never, never any Wolverine talk in my house. What's the most important lesson that you've learned thus far in your career? Oh, man. Um, 
I think it's, you know, having humility um, and, and being able to understand when, when maybe you aren't always right, or, or maybe somebody also can, can have a good idea. Um, but with that, always being a, a lifelong learner, I talk to our coaches all the time about being a lifelong learner and, and always trying to find something better to, to uh, learn and, and to get better at. Um, so I think those are, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, but I, I think that's some, something that I've learned throughout my career. Those are good. Um, if you weren't coaching, what would you be doing? Yeah. Um, so I actually, during COVID, I got my real estate license. Um, okay. I since have done nothing with it. So I would have to get my license again. So that was one thing that I thought about doing. Um, but I'm actually uh, pretty big into food. Um, and I did early on, before I decided I want to be a football coach, I thought about opening a restaurant or managing a restaurant or something like that um, in the food industry, hospitality. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, man. I it's actually a two-parter, just... too. So Okay, okay. Um, yeah, best compliment I've ever had. Uh, I guess this one was just really recent, and, and I think it um, goes to me being a coach and just my personality and how I think. But I just got told recently that I was extremely organized or one of the most organized people that person that, that somebody has met. And I was like, Oh, cool. I, I try to be organized. So, uh, that I'm glad I, I, I look that way from the outside too. And then on the other side of compliments, it's the best insult you've ever received. Oh man. I don't know. I, I think people, like think that I'm too nice. So I don't, I don't know if people, people don't really give me many insults. Um, maybe too sensitive sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Every once in a while, I guess can get too sensitive. Organized and sensitive. I don't think those would be necessarily bad things. Um, yeah. All right, coach, this is the last question. We've asked everybody this same question. It's kind of worded funny, but was there a question that you were expecting me to ask you? And if so, mm -hmm. how would you have answered it? Is there a question I was expecting? I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to, that, unfortunately, that's a cop out, but I, I, I feel like you asked every question I expected to hear about the season, about um, maybe, maybe a, a question about recruiting and, and what it's like at a high academic division three um, school. And I guess the way that I would answer that is it's, um, it is, harder and easier at the same time uh, we yeah. recruit a uh, compared to some other division three schools uh, we recruit a smaller pool even though we're recruiting nationally um, but you know having uh, you know needing a certain GPA or test score or you know whatever to to even get into Kenyan right that that shrinks our pool so um, you know it gives us a, a clearer but then we're also competing with other really high academic schools that people seek to go to um yeah. so that, that sometimes makes it it tough as well but yeah that's the only thing i can think of that that i was thinking that you might ask me well so i just had one pop into my head because i realized that you're you're you you pointed it out as well um what is it like this early on in your coaching career being a head coach um fun uh <laughs> It's definitely, you know, you get to that point, you know, I think every coach does where you're like, oh, if I was a head coach, I would do this. Or if I was a head coach, I would do it this way. Uh, well, now I have the opportunity to do those things. And, uh, you know, some of those things I've decided to do, some of those things I'm like, ah, that probably actually isn't a very good idea. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been, obviously, as you talked about earlier, there's been some turnover here, um, even just in my first couple of years. Um, at the helm. So that that's, you know, been tough is having to continuously hire new guys on. Um, but I have been extremely um, pleased with with the guys that I've been been able to hire. Um, so that's good. And and I'm learning new things every day about about how to run the program about how, how to continue to build relationships, how to manage people. Um, because I'll be honest, I half my staff is well, probably more than half my staff is older than me. And, uh, you know, a third of my staff is younger, right? So I got to figure out how, how do I manage the guys that, you know, are older and have technically been coaching longer than me. And, you know, how do I mentor those younger guys, um, to get to where either I was or, or am now. Now, coach, did I see that you opened the season with a, uh, with a PAC member? Is that, uh, is that, uh, so we opened with Bluffton. I think it's okay. the HCAC. Yeah. 
So what and what day is the what is the home opener for or the season opener for you guys? Yeah, so we're September second, and okay. it's a it's actually a night game. All right. Well, best of luck this year. Hopefully, this time next year we're we're talking about 2024 and recapping yeah. the 2023 season. Um, and for those of you that are sticking around, you know what comes up next. It's overtime with Serenity Brown. Um, I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the head coach of Kenyon College, Coach Ian Good. Thank you again for being with us, and we'll be right back, Chuckleheads. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. That's Serenity Brown. This is Overtime with Serenity Brown. As we just wrapped up talking with Coach Good of Kenyon College. Pretty good interview. Yeah. Short, sweet. I mean, he was pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> before we get any further, if you're watching us on YouTube, really appreciate you. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. If you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or wherever else you get your podcasts, appreciate you as well. Uh, make sure you follow us on X, IG, Facebook, and TikTok. The only one that's different is the Instagram account. That's dingo underscore talk. Uh, it was a very rough week on this side of the board for uh, for some for some things. So we're gonna let the uh, to the victor goes the spoils. So how do you feel? Nine and I one. I feel like I whooped you. Nine and one. <laughs> Nine and one. Um, that's all you got. That's the. That's all you got. All right. I think my win speaks for itself. I don't even need to. All right. So, as of right now, as we go into week three, the standings are: DB is uh, still catching up, but he is twelve and three. I am fourteen and six. And Serenity is 16 and 4. Um, so we have 10 more games. DV's picking uh, 15. That'll catch him up. Uh, on top of the 10 games, he's picking another 5. That'll catch him up to us. Uh, and then we'll all be picking the same games starting next week. Um, obviously, our game of the week is Kenyon and Wittenberg, so we'll keep that for last. There's also a uh, our alma mater is on the list for the first time. So uh, let's start it off. Westminster and W&J. 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 Albright versus Kings. I picked Albright. I took Kings. Case Western versus Grove City. I picked Case Western. I picked Grove City. John Number 17, John Carroll versus Baldwin Wallace. John Carroll. Both of us took Ball, uh, John Carroll. Uh, number four, Wisconsin Whitewater, who jumped four spots from last week after the big victory over the Johnnies against number 19, Mary Harden Baylor, who is still trying to find that first win of the season. Whitewater. Uh, Hartwick and Juniata, or as you tried to pronounce it, uh, <laughs> Uniata, because we threw some Spanish in there, which was cool. <laughs> Bilingual, this one. So who'd you pick? Uh, Hartwick. I took Juniata. <laughs> you don't know. I do know, actually. <laughs> I, I do. I can promise you it's Juniata, and it's located, I believe, in Erie, Pennsylvania. But I digress. Number 22, Susquehanna, versus number 10, Cortland. Cortland. I also took Cortland. Um, I'm going to save that, that one there that's right next up in line. We're going to... Okay. So, number one, North Central versus Carthage. North Central. And I took North Central. You'll both, everybody at home, you'll notice there are two games there that are repeats. So everybody got a win. That would be Case Western and Grove City, and North Central and Carthage. Who made a mistake? Because somebody's reading comprehension skills lied to me in the PSSAs for many years. Because reading comprehension was a was a big bonus. Apparently not. Um, <clears throat> all right, Bethany versus Teal. It's a go. tough one. We had a, we, this is a real debate. We had a real debate on this one. Uh, we did, but we're sticking it out, and we're going with our alma mater, <laughs> Bethany. I uh, I am a bison. You're a bison. DB's yeah. a bison this week. Uh, we're all three picking Bethany. And then the game of the week. Uh, it's the first time that I am not picking the uh, team that we are that hosting. we interviewed? Yes. So, well, guess what? Are we surprised that I'm also not picking No. Kenyon? No, we are not. Kenyon versus Wittenberg. We're both taking Wittenberg. Um, week three. It's been a very exciting football season so far. Uh, there's a name. There is one team on that board that has continued to stay, and that's because they keep winning. So, um, 
You got anything else? I don't think so. I got nothing else. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, I don't even know. Who, I honestly, I don't even know where our where our Roth, where our list is to say what the I'm next coach sure. is. So I to can't can't do a little teaser because I didn't prepare myself. We'll just have to come back next week to uh, find out. See, she's good. At, she's getting better at this every week. Uh, we'll see you next week, Chuckleheads. Thanks for checking out this episode of Dingo Talk. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. For more info and to contact the show, you can find us on Twitter at Dingo Talk.